Hello, I am your Kingdom Spiritual Transformational and Life Purpose Life Coach and Mentor Latricia Booker. And I'm popping in on you to tell you that they think you are holding a grudge. Kingdom people, they think you are holding a grudge. And the thing is that you're not. You're not holding a grudge. You're not tripping. You're just over it. You don't care. It is what it is. You know, things happen. You process it. You accept it for what it is. And you move on. But many people, these people, them ones, take that as you're holding a grudge. Even though you're not. And my thing is, when God brought this to my attention, like many other things, my thing was, even if I'm holding a grudge, so what? I have a right to hold a grudge. Why are you so concerned about me holding a grudge? It's like, move on with your life and me let me do me. If I'm holding a grudge, not that I am, not that you are, kingdom people, because you're not. This is the thing. People know that even if you were holding a grudge, you have a right to, or you within your rights to. In other words, you have a reason to, even though that's not what you're doing. So to you know, want to harbor thoughts within yourself that they're holding a grudge, that you're holding a grudge, came to people. It's like, what's the point? But here's what God pointed out to me. He told me that that's called deflection. Now, we know what deflection is. And I never looked at it in that way initially. But God said to me, he pointed out to me, he brought it all back to my remembrance what deflection is. You know, we know deflection to be not wanting to take accountability for your actions, for your behavior, and turning everything around on the other person. Deflect, to deflect onto the other person, to take the attention off of yourself and put it on the other person. Instead of being held accountable or holding yourself accountable, you turn to the other person. And God said, that's a way of trying to make something wrong with you, making you, you know, it's almost like people, not almost, people want to pick you apart, make you out to be the bad person, make it where you're wrong, make it where you're doing this, you're doing that, deflecting. Even though, as I said, if you were are hurting a grudge, it's okay for you to be because what has been done or the, you know, whatever your reason is for removing yourself from, from people, if you holding a grudge, so what? The thing is, People feel these kind of people, those people, them ones feel like, because they want to do what they want to do with you. They want to have their way with you, even though they done whatever they done or whatever, even if they didn't do anything and they're just not good for you. And you realize that and you move around, you protect yourself from toxicity and people that just are carrying demons and all this other kind of stuff, you know, that you know what people be on. And, you know, what they carry in their spirit, you know, what the, the spirits that are operating in them. The thing is, people like that, that feel like you're holding the grudge, they're just angry that they can't do with you with what, the, what they want to do. They can't have access to you. They can't have their way with you. They just really angry because they missing out on you. They And they did it. You know, whatever, again, even if they didn't do anything towards you per se, just who they are. And not talking down on people because everybody is somewhere. But at this place in your life, came to people, you can't do and be around certain things. You are in your place of purpose. God is moving you into what he has for you to do and what he has for you. And because of that, you just can't be around and deal with anybody. And so... Some people even understand just that, that they just can't, they're not where you are. And and it's not so much that they're supposed to be where you are, but they're not even doing what they need to do to be where they need to be. In other words, elevating spiritually. And here's the thing. God pointed out to me this morning that, you know, he reminded me of something I learned, learned long ago. And I learned long ago that, People who have a hard time taking accountability, for the most part, they feel like if they acknowledge that they did this or they, they, they got this going on, that this is an issue that they have, that it, 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 they can't handle it. Let me say it that way. They can't handle acknowledging that because they're already very insecure and don't feel very good about themselves. Don't, it don't matter how they put on that's why they put on. You know, a lot of these people, they live through their egos, which is why they 
have to have this, do this, be seen a certain way. They need outside validation. They need people to accept them and to approve them for them to feel like something because they don't know how to do that for themselves. They don't validate themselves. They don't approve themselves. Of course, it's God approving you first, and then you approve yourself because God approved you. And that comes with self-love as well. You know, you, you know, these people, they don't have that. And so for them to take accountability or acknowledge something that they have going on that needs to be dealt with, it makes them feel horrible. And it makes them feel, you know, worse than, you know, they already feel. So again, they already putting on and doing all these things to make themselves feel okay. So taking accountability and looking something in the mirror and saying, this is what it is. This one I am. They can't handle that. Not that they can't learn how to. Because the truth is when you take account of, listen, taking accountability for your actions, looking yourself in the mirror. Look, I'm, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him or her to change their ways, you know? So what happens is they feel like if they do that or <laughs> not they, they don't feel like if they do that, when, sometimes they attempt to, they feel horrible. It's like they can't handle the truth. And again, it doesn't mean they can't come to a place where they can. You know, it's a work that needs to be done. It goes back to healing. Healing is not for the faint of heart. This woke ain't for the faint of heart. You know, you have to be strong spirited. And there it is right there. These people are weak spirited. So uh, in many ways, they have to build their spirits up the God way. Not the demonic way. That ain't really building your spirit. It's actually tearing it down. Because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So it ain't doing nothing really but destroying you and your soul. When you operate from demonic, you know, influences or, you know, any anything of that sort. So anyhow, King of People, the thing is, these people deflect. They say you holding a grudge because they can't. They don't have the capacity to own what is going on with them and what they need to do and to go through the healing process and look at, they have a lot of inner turmoil. These people have a lot of inner turmoil. And again, they don't want to deal with that. They just don't have the, it doesn't mean again that they can't develop it. I mean, you got to start somewhere. We all have to start somewhere. And that's the thing. Starting somewhere means you. that's just the start. And these are the kind of people that want quick fixes. We often hear and we know that people want the results without going doing the work. It's the same thing. And so, again, it starts with taking accountability. Instead of taking accountability, they afflict. They deflect. I say afflict. <laughs> they deflect. Deflecting, again, is taking off of it off of yourself. Not acknowledging your error or what you're doing and where you need to work, what you need to deal with and work on instead of focusing on somebody else. But that's what they do. They don't own it. They deflect. And sometimes even when they attempt to own it or want to present it to you like they are, they're still deflecting involved because they always have to point out to you why they did what they did and what how you contributed to that, which still is a form of deflecting. So anyhow, came the people, just wanted to point that out because like I said, God reminded me of that today, of how it's hard for them because they just don't have the capacity. They are weak spirited. You know, they can learn a thing or two from you, but they don't want to do that. They really don't. Even if even those people that are trying to get back in your energy, I'll say, in your life, it's not to really learn and grow. They just want to pull from what you have, from what you are. And even if it's seemingly seen, even if they start off wanting to with that desire to, here's the thing. I've said this before. Those demons are still there. These people haven't changed. So what will happen if you were to let them back around you? Not that you would, because I know you won't. But if you were to, we just speaking hypothetically, those demons will start to manifest all over again. And you will be experiencing the same thing you was experiencing which is why you removed yourself in the first place so again 
these people have a lot of stuff going on within them. They have a lot of inner turmoil. And I'm just going to be real. What God been giving me. Nope. You can't help them. It's some people that just cannot be helped. Because they think they have this problem. But their problem really go way deeper than what they're trying to, you know, make it out to be where in their mind they need to be around you. And... To be honest, their problem is something that you can't help. Because again, it goes really deep. Those are really deep, deep, deep rooted issues. It goes beyond you. One thing that I've learned is these kind of people, they're not teachable. And these are also the kind of people that have all the answers. You can't hardly tell them nothing many a times because they have something to say to you behind it or have an excuse for it. And so they're not teachable. You know, they come to you sometimes for a you know, help or want to know what you think or something, you know, in the cases where that is the case. But then they kind of make excuses or tell you how, you know, it's almost like they want to go back and forth with you over what they coming to you for. But that's a whole nother thing. And I just heard that's even a form of deflecting because if you're sharing because they ask, <laughs> that means you're saying what it is to help them with their situation. And they start scratching all over it, deflecting. So my point in saying is that these kind of people can't be helped. People that think you are holding a grudge because they can't take accountability for what's going on with them and they want to deflect on you and make you a problem when you ain't nowhere around. <laughs> well, you holding a grudge. <laughs> can't the people. You're not holding a grudge. But... Unfortunately, like I said, these people really can't be helped. And if they can be, you can't help them. And here's what God gave me concerning this matter. Romans 12 and 19. And it says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves. Believe it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Here the people, you ain't holding no grudge. You ain't trying to wish these people bad. You don't want to do nothing to them. You leave them in God's hands. You let God deal with these people. You know, because they're not your problem. They're God's problem. <laughs> they actually they own problem. But again, they can't own up to that. They can't acknowledge that. We have done that, King of People. We have, we have acknowledged where we was our own issue. And we did something about it. They don't have the capacity to do that. These again, they want to dump everything on you, dump their problems on you, deflect on you, make it out to be you. You holding the grudge. So you they problem. <laughs> Proverbs 24 and 29 says, do not say, I will do to him what he has done to me. I will pay the man back for what he has done. King of people, we don't do that. We ain't over here like, I'm going to do to you what you did to me. I'm a... So if we're not doing that, we definitely are not holding grudges. We just let it go. We've let it go. We walked away. We recognize that that's not for us. That's not a good thing. That's not anything or anybody to that's good for me or you came to people to be involved in or involved with. We're not holding grudges. <laughs> but their deflection says <laughs> that you're holding a grudge. <laughs> Proverbs 12 and 16, the came to people. Listen, I'm not laughing at them. I'm laughing at the the insanity <laughs> of it all. You know, pray for these people. You know, clearly they need help. You know, I feel for them personally. But just the thinking is just like, you know, it's devil. You know, it ain't nobody but the devil. I often see and hear things and even hear what God tell me. And I'm like, there ain't nobody but the devil. But the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus came so that we may have life and have life more, but more abundantly. These people cannot get to that life and life more abundantly because they're too busy allowing the devil to kill, steal, and destroy. Them, their life, their abundance that is awaiting them. If they do the work, if they acknowledge and accept responsibility instead of deflection, instead of saying that you holding a grudge, <laughs> again, what they got to do with you? <laughs> with them, I'm saying. If you are in a grudge, so do your work. That's If I'm holding a grudge, it sounds like that's my problem. That's a personal problem with me. What they got to do with you? Again, deflection. Proverbs 12 and 16. The, vex, the vexation of a fool is known at once, but the prudent ignores an insult. Listen, 
You know what I'm saying? They, that you were holding a grudge, kingdom people. That's the vexation of a fool. <laughs> Because again, who cares? The fact that that's whether they're saying it to other people or it's just a thought on the way they feel, that's a vexation of a fool. What do I mean by that? You're vexing yourself. You're hurting yourself doing that. Not you king of people, but it, unless you're doing it, which I don't believe you king of people are doing that. Maybe at one point you did, but you learned. Or you're learning, whatever the case may be. But that's only vexing you. That makes, I mean, that's foolish. It says the vexation of a fool is known at once. And what did I just say? That, what? It don't make sense. That's foolish. But what I'm keep getting is they vexed. I literally keep getting that. But here it is. Here's you, Canaan people. But the prudent ignores an insult. We ignore their stuff. We're not tripping on them. We ain't holding no grudge. I was listening to someone, I want to say yesterday, yeah. And this young lady was saying how... You know, don't let nobody disrespect you. Don't let nobody disrespect you in your face. Don't let nobody. And I'm just listening like you can't control what other people do. But here's my thing. If a person is being disrespectful, first of all, that's on them. Secondly, I don't have to deal with them. If a person can't be respectful towards me, you know, I want to say at some point I won't be around. For you to even be disrespectful. You can be trying to be disrespectful on the outskirts. But I say won't be around. I mean, I say at some point, you know, because, you know, it has been times and situations where you give people grace. You give them a chance to correct themselves. But then there are other times when you don't give a person a chance, depending on the situation, the circumstances, and who they are. You know, some people, you just got to cut it off, nip it in the bud right in the way. Again, don't let people have access to you. And if if, if a situation where you just have to be around that person, they if they being disrespectful, they disrespecting themselves. You ain't got to acknowledge their behavior. It says, I just read, that the prudent ignores an insult. You're prudent. That means you're wise. You're noble. You ignore that mess. So what do you do? Go right back on them. It's theirs. You ain't tripping. You ain't holding no grudge. You just let it go. You leave it up to God to deal with these people because you got other things to do. How they say you got bigger fish to fry. You got better things. You got kingdoms and empires and legacies to build. Kingdom people, they think you're holding a grudge. But we know that's not so. Kingdom people, <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. If you like this video and or if it resonates with you, please just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Then click on that red subscribe button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Thank you. Make sure you click that bell so you can receive a notification every time I upload a new video. Kingdom of people, if you need any information about me, you can find all that right down below in the description box along with other helpful resources. Kingdom of people, I really appreciate you all for being here. I thank you all so much for all that you do here on the channel. I thank you for all the seeds that you sow into me in my ministry, for all your likes, subscribes, comments, and your encouragement, your input. Thank you, Kingdom of people. I really do appreciate you all. Now, King the people, y'all know I love you so very much. I really don't want to leave you, but I do have to go right now. But I will be back to hold my King of people down. Now, King of people, above all else, let the Holy Spirit lead you in all things at all times. King of people, we are unmovable, we are untouchable, we are unstoppable, and we are unbreakable. That is my time. Jesus, girl, is out. Peace.